Hi everybody, my name is Dennis. Welcome to my channel. Today we're going to talk about the Versa H15 micro ATX case and have a quick look because I'm going to do my first micro ATX motherboard install. And I thought, what better than to put it in a nice little small form factor and go from there. So let's have a quick look at the case and see what comes in the box. Okay, so our product today is a Thermaltake Versa H15. It's a micro ATX case. So we're going to use this because I bought a, a micro ATX motherboard and I decided to why put it into a bigger case it doesn't really need. So let's see what this one's all about. Let's have a look at it. So we're going to get it out of the box. And for something so small, of course it's going to be light. And I'll get it out of the box and we'll go from there. Okay, so getting it out of the box, we can see you have uh, room on the top for two fans. You've got a USB 2.0, USB 3.0, your on button and your reset switch, and your headphones and your mic. It's got lots of cooling in the front. You have room for a five and a quarter inch drive, and we'll move on to the side. So one of the things that's nice is uh, when you move on to the side, you can see it's got this little cutout which extrudes from the side of the case. So when you're doing your cable management, it'll give you a little bit of extra room inside here for putting your cables in. So that's kind of a nice added uh, feature to this case. Okay, so looking at the other side of the case, we can see the same thing. So it's afforded us on both sides of the case, the extra room if we need cable management. Okay, going back to the back of the case, you've got room for your IO shield for your motherboard. Uh, the rear exhaust for your cooling for your 120 millimeter rear exhaust fan, your cutouts for your graphics card or wireless adapter, whatever it might be. You've got some more cooling on the side, and of course, like I mentioned, you had it on the top here as well. And then you'll have your power supply on the bottom, so bottom mounted. So we're going to get the side panel off, and we're going to have a look on the inside. Okay, so getting a side panel off, just take that off. So this is where your cable management is going to come into play. The back uh, or side panel is really, really. Nice solid steel. Okay, nothing wrong with that. We'll set that down for the time being. So you can see on the side here, you've got lots of room for cable management. Okay, not lots of room. I should correct that. You have room for cable management. But because of the extrusion that comes out about a quarter of an inch, I'd say, you're going to have room to kind of tuck your cables in here. Now, the thing to keep in mind is because you're going to have a micro ATX motherboard in here, um, it's not going to have that much cable management to deal with so you don't really need that much so one of the things I'll notice as well is everything is kind of just set and loose in here I guess when you buy a budget case you can expect that it's not going to be in a box I guess um, anyway it's all set in there nice it's got all your standoffs I'd say you've got everything you need so moving on to the other side we're just going to take this other remaining screw out of here and take it off again. Comes off a little tight, but that's okay. And again, almost identical to the other side. Actually, you could probably mistake the side panels. That's the only thing I might see on this. I'll find out when I go to put it back on. All right, so getting it off, of course, you can see inside. So you've got your hard drive cage in the bottom. Room for your five and a quarter inch on top. You've got room for two 120 millimeter fans on the top. On the back for your rear exhaust, you've got a 120 millimeter exhaust fan. So let me just see if I can show that to you a little better. All right, so not uh, the best of fans, but I mean, like we say, it's a budget case. But I think it's good enough. You got lots of room, so it's going to reach anywhere you need to plug it into. And it is a three-pin uh, connector. And of course, you've got all your can uh, your uh, LED connections in here, they're kind of tightened on the side of the case. Okay, so you've got your audio, your power, your hard drive, and your reset. And of course your three and a half inch for your front panel. It's all just kind of nicely tied on the side here. And there's not a lot to say for it. I mean, you don't have a lot of room, so you're obviously you're going to have to be careful when you get your graphics card uh, as to what graphics card you're going to put in this system. But I kind of starting to like the little small form factor. And of course the five and a quarter inch drive is toolless. 
It just has a thing here that tightens it, you know, uh, tighten it, lock it in place. Your power supply, of course, is going to set on the bottom. You don't have any, any um, so I'm turn this so you can see. Okay, there's no rubber grommets in any of your openings, but, you know, sometimes you don't need them anyway. But it does have extra openings, so you can feed all your cables up and through. You do have an opening on the back. I'll just turn this around so you can see it. Little opening here so you can put your 8-pin connector in there or 4-pin, whatever it might happen to be. And the nice thing as well is you've got this. This actually goes inside here. So you can fit a lot of cables in there. So that on top of having the extra uh, side panel giving you extra room here. Whatever you're going to put in this case, you're going to have ample uh, room for it. Okay, so getting on to the bottom of this case, you got a nice filter for your um, power supply. So you just pull this out. Okay, it's a little tighter than I thought it would be. It apparently just snaps right off. It snaps off, pulls out, goes back in place, and just kind of locks in place here again. And it just snaps in there. So kind of basically you have to pull it out, then you can kind of do that. I don't know why they do it that way, but I guess it's okay. And you got uh, your round rubber feet nothing nothing uh, exciting in this case but it does look nice it does give you room for anything you want to do it's exceedingly light which of course being a micro ATX case you'd expect that you do have room on the inside of the case for putting in a radiator here so you can get a in this case you can in the front of the case you can get a 120 or a 240 millimeter uh, radiator on the top you can get a 120 or a 240 millimeter radiator and in the rear you can get the 120 millimeter uh, in the back as well. Now if you're looking for fan support you can have two fans on the front up to 120 millimeters. You can have two on the top 120 millimeters and one in the rear which is your exhaust fan which already comes pre-installed at 120 millimeters. You have four expansion slots for your uh, hard drives. Okay, so and this uh, one of the other things to mention is the dimensions of the case. They're 378 by 198 by 411 millimeters, or in other words, 15 inches by 7.8 inches by 16.2 inches. So clearance for your CPU cooler, you have 155 millimeters. You have room for a 330 millimeter. Uh, GPU power supply is 160 millimeters and the overall length and dimensions is 150 millimeters Now I mentioned that this uh, case uh, accommodates a micro ATX. It will also accommodate a mini ITX as well. So a small form factor build This case has got you covered uh, So getting back to the uh, if you're gonna put an SSD in this case The SSD gets mounted underneath here and then you do have your four screws which will line up for your SSD in case you're wondering and of course, then you have room for your three and a half inch uh, normal hard drives. Something else to notice is, is these, uh, your covers for your graphics card or adapters, whatever you're going to put in here, they, they don't have screws. Okay, you can have the screw holes. So once you put your device in there, whether it be a GPU or wireless adapter, or whatever, and then you have to bend these pieces out. So you have to bend them until you get them out of place and then you can fit in your graphics card or wireless adapter, whatever it might be. So going back to the front of the case, Simply reach underneath here and just pull it off. One thing that's nice is the everything is all your cables are connected underneath here. So taking this off to get to the filter, so you got a couple of filters here. Well, that'll come up if you put a five and a quarter inch drive in it. For the rest of this, you got a filter. It easily comes out. It's got these little tabs here. All right, so that'll come out. You can clean it and then you just pop it back on. All right, kind of nice and clean. It's got a good look to it. And it just pops back on here. Just like that. No must, no fuss. So finally having a look at the inside of what uh, comes in that little plastic baggie here. You've got your hard drive rails. So those will go on your hard drive and then they'll just slide in here of course. So they give you a couple, enough for two hard drives. You've got your twist ties. You've got an extra one for back here for your graphics card if you need it as a replacement. I don't see too many small cases uh, that give you that but it's nice to have. In here you've got all your uh, standoffs for your case. Your motherboard screws and anything else you're going to need to fasten in the hard drive or whatever. And of course that is from the back to fasten your side panels and it comes with a nice little manual. Hi everybody. Well, I hope you liked that uh, video. If you like the video, hit that like. If you don't, hit the dislike. Leave me a comment and tell me what you uh, think about it. 
or if you have any questions, please fire them my way and I'll do my best to answer them for you. And if you want to see more of my videos in the future, please subscribe and uh, we got more good stuff coming. I just haven't, got a, haven't had time to do the whole thing yet. One of the things that you will see coming up in one of my videos real soon is how to take an H110 motherboard, Micro ATX, that says it takes a 6th gen, which it does, but how to make it take the 7th seventh, seventh generation motherboard, the KB Lake processor. So that involves updating the BIOS, and I'll show you how that's done. Stay tuned. Thanks for watching.